will stick to that or they'll challenge the Tigers to ban that out. Yeah, I wonder if, yeah, the Victor, Victor ban is, should be interesting in this game and oh. will the Sivir okay. be banned? No, CJ says we still don't want you to play Victor Kuro and Kuro really showing up. Kuro has been a soft spot on this team, but yeah. one thing to note about Kuro is recently he's been playing a lot more solo queue mm. and he's pretty high on the ladder right now. Uh, I didn't check today, but he's been in like the top 25, uh, which is high for him. Yeah. And so it looks like he's pretty individually motivated right now. And when players used to just beat the Tigers in the later part of last season by kind of dumping all over Kuro in the mid lane, <laughs> he's been able to hold his own a lot better as of late. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing in Korea. A lot of teams are agreeing that, yeah, I mean, a, a lot more solo queue practice definitely makes a big difference. Granted, you have to work that around the rest of your infrastructure. But in the older days, some of the teams didn't really focus on that as much. So. We're seeing that change. Mad Life talked about that a while ago, too. And the LeBlanc ban, the last one for CJ Angus. Shy, notably, hardly ever playing solo queue, though. He's a little bit of an outlier huh. in that way. You know who used to play a lot of solo queue? Flame. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he played. Man. Like thousands of games he on Kennen. So much. <laughs> I remember I visited the CJ Angus house once and uh, I was just like sleeping over and then I woke up the next day and I see Flame, he woke up at like 5 a.m. He's playing solo queue on his own in the practice room, just like playing a Kali that he never gets to play. <laughs> just like, what are you doing? He's just like, just playing, just playing some games. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, that's <laughs> what you do, man. Okay, Alistair first here for CJ Angus, just like it was with the Tigers in the last game. Evelyn actually banned out against Sojin. Not not sure about that ban. It did do some work in the laning phase, obviously, yeah. setting up that first blood. Uh, but Space and Mad Life did bounce back from that, the double kill on the vein at that rather extended dragon fight that went down. Azir and Gragas locked in, so actually mirror draft so far. Yeah. Azir and Gragas taken in the first round on red side by CJ in the first game. Tigers taking Alistair. So interesting that these teams have so much overlap in terms of their priority. And the highlights right now, not too indicative of what CJ Angus will pick. And this is a little bit with the Rek'Sai most likely are gonna be picked up by a mission, but we'll see if he chooses to go for Nunu or Lee Sin. I mean, well, the Nunu isn't banned this game, so there yeah. is that aspect of it as well. If they want to go for a more controlling style and try and keep Hojin under wraps in the early game, I think you do take away the rumble here. Shy's been so good on it so far this season. Yes, the Ramis. And it's just, again, the rumble has been successful for CJ because it allows them, when they pick things like Vayne and Azir, to get to the point where those champions really come online. Whereas last game with Maokai, not yeah. so much. I mean, yes, he's very tanky, but he doesn't provide so much punch in the mid game. And that's where they really fell behind. So now, they are going to be the ones taking Corky and Rumble. Are we just going to switch compositions this game? <laughs> I mean, we're nearing that point. Now, Smeb, he, he has that itch to always play at least half of a carry role in that top lane. I mean, sure, he's played. I mean, he plays a brilliant NAR, and he was one of the first really good NAR players in Korea. But even then, it was because he was so aggressive. So I don't know if we'll necessarily see him a Maokai, even if it's available. I think he will choose something a little bit more aggressive, like possibly this Hecarim. Uh, quite a few other choices too. We saw that Kennen being highlighted earlier. Although that's hard to just set up in general, especially with the Gragas. Uh, the Gnar gonna be picked up for Smem, and that's not surprising, as I mentioned. And Ezreal as well. So no chance of that going mid, obviously, in this particular situation. <laughs> uh, it is a little bit of a denial. Coco may have wanted to play a mid yeah. Ezreal also, and it's going to keep them safe. They're afraid of all-ins, I think, from this Alistair on the bottom side. So they get something with a lot of mobility just to keep harm at bay, at least for the moment. And Prey, of course, a legacy Ezreal player, one of his most yeah. played champions of all time, so. Prey imitating the scanner and whatnot. That's what he became famous for in the beginning. He was also known as a Triforce AD carry. And looking at Jace, I mean, Coco, the Korean sniper wouldn't be too surprising. And then the Nunu for ambition in the jungle. Yeah, Nunu Jace. Uh, we've seen Jace only from Coco in this season. Yeah. Uh, he's the only Jace player that we've got, and that's what they're going to do. They're going to lock it in. So, again, 
CJ, they like to play Azir Vane. Nunu, if they can get it. If they can't get it, they tend to go double AD Nunu. Yeah. This is just how it is. Uh, Nunu was banned in the first game, so they haven't done it, but this has been their bread and butter so far this season, uh, and they're going to try it out again. Of course, Coco, known for his accuracy, and I love the poke that comes in from Corky, Rumble, and Jace. That is really yeah. difficult to deal with. Very good siege composition in the mid game. Great at killing the back line. Gorilla hovering over this bard. We can dream, can't we, Chobra? <laughs> we can. He's been playing it in solo queue quite a bit. Now, it wouldn't be bad. Yes. It wouldn't be bad here because, like you mentioned, I mean, they're going to try to go for the back lane. They're just going to try to siege, and you can force fights that CJ never wanted to happen by simply even freezing CJ. I think you're absolutely right. And I think this is a wonderful pick against a poke composition like this. Bard does have a lot of versatility, like you're saying, with his ultimate, just to close the gap on them and prevent them from kiting it out. Yes. So Bard could be quite powerful here. And they've got a lot of Siege potential themselves and a lot of poke. So CJ going to have to be very careful. They're vulnerable to explosive casks. They're vulnerable to Bard ultimates, that tempered fate, in terms of setting up their Siege. So they have to be ready to disengage on a hair trigger. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be a little different than what we saw last week with the Bard. But here, when you have that explosive cast, like you mentioned, or even the Emperor's Survive, when you need these ultimates that need a lot of positional setup. I mean, Bard can just put down his ultimate first, Smep can walk in as Mega Nar, get his ultimate. There's so many possibilities. That said, CJ is one of the better teams at running eight, uh, double AD compositions. Them and SK Telecom really like to play a lot with poke and with uh, kiting, and they are quite good at it, quite accustomed to it. So we'll see what Coco can do in this matchup against Azir in the mid lane. Probably going for a pretty passive early game here. Uh, until CJ starts to force the issue by grouping up, at which point it will be up to the Tigers to see how well they can close onto the back line of CJ Entis. Well, let's find out in game number two. Mission just going to play with all of the World Championship skins. <laughs> now he's really mocking his teammates. He's like, did you not get that you didn't win a World Championship earlier? Well, guess who beat you guys? I wasn't there. I was still in Korea. Blaze didn't make it. We got knocked out by Sword in Season 2 before we could even make it to Worlds. If we go to Game 3, I hope we see Lisa. <laughs> <for> <laughs> the <a> SKT Lisa. <laughs> that would just be golden. Oh, boy. And the Tigers. A, a tour of world champions <laughs> with your guide. <laughs> that is pretty troll, though, to play uh, a, to play a TPA skin when Shy, <laughs> Shy and Mad Life lost to them in the world championships. Oh, the passive aggression is pretty real here. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Tigers were looking for a possible a catch or even a bait, but they see the wards, so they're just going to put down their own vision and journey all the way up to the top side. Oh, so if you guys don't know, uh, he's a famous singer who won, uh, I forget which show it was. It was one of the um, Korean like audition, music audition uh, shows, and he won it in like season two or something. So he's been very popular, but he's very popular because he also plays League of Legends a lot. So giving a shout out to Mad Life here. Is he a big streamer? Uh, I don't think he streams. Ah. Well, good. We have reality TV celebrities in the studio yeah. today, Chobra. That's pretty awesome. And uh, Kuro with that 25% mid rate, but that really doesn't. Aff if you watched his games against SKT, he was kind of the only thing holding <laughs> yes. the Ku Tigers together yes. in those games. So I don't think it's really indicative of the skill that we've seen him play with this champion. Meantime, just going out and helping with the leash, we do see a lane swap coming in. I guess Space of Mad Life not wanting to deal with this. Uh, really just going to walk into the red buff right now. CJ starting to jungle on their weak side. Missed that cosmic binding, but he's not really going to huh. care. He's going to walk around the circle. I wonder if CJ was trying to catch the lane swap yeah. from the Tigers. Yeah, because this just allows were. Bard to roam all day, every day. I, I'm pretty sure they were. They don't want this Bard just walking around this entire game, trying to get ganks down and not punishing Bard's uh, less than stellar laning phase. I mean, he's okay now with the bindings. He's certainly yeah. not the as terrible as he used to be, but still, in comparison. 
Yeah, I mean, I, and again, the big thing here is that Find Prey can just solo farm, especially on Ezreal, and then Gorilla can just go around picking up charms, sending up ganks, putting down pressure. Yeah, the other thing that this opens up is the possibility of going for a tier first on Prey also. Uh, we'll see if he wants to do that. He'd obviously have to go start thinking about going back pretty soon if he wants to maximize his stacks on that item. Not generally something we see from AD Ezreal's, but it is something that carries less risk in a lane swap scenario. So Gorilla is going to prance his way. I think that's what Bard does, right? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Prance mincing, mince his way into the top <laughs> lane. It's a very delicate walk. He, he does indeed. Very skinny ankles. He just needs to tiptoe around. Weak ankles. That's so it gets so it gets barred down. You have to be careful. He was never really good at sports. <laughs> Meanwhile, nice shot on Kuro. I mean, Coco has been really good at keeping Kuro down. Kuro has been trying to counter it out, but Coco still has one more biscuit in his pockets. Sponge on that whenever he feels that he's not the same when he's hungry. What happens, if, what happens if you pop a bar? Because it's, it's his buoyancy that's really <laughs> keeping him up right there. Is he filled with hydrogen or helium? Is he flammable? I don't know. Evelyn, the hard counter. <laughs> Bard, and he just put down the hate spikes. <laughs> just kind of fizzles out. He's like, no. Xi Zhao just pokes him. <laughs> uh, that'd be great if his passive also included get slowed by auto attacks with sharp weapons. <laughs> it's just like, as you lose air, you just can't bounce as far. Almost gets the stun on shot, but it wouldn't have really mattered too much. Prey probably would have gotten just one shot, and as we have Mad Life down bottom, uh, he's gonna be able to keep Shy topped up in hell. Yeah, Shy's starting to fall behind against Smeb's Rumble, however. Uh, he did pick up some cloth armor, but still having a bit of a rough time in terms of the lane swap situation, getting poked quite a bit by Prey. Yeah, and so because of that, earlier we saw Gorilla up top, but then CJ deciding they're the ones who really need the support with the solo leader right now, given the situation. Uh, so this will help keep Shy. Somewhat similar, Smeb has a large wave coming towards his tower though. And with that knife, he'll be able to pick up most of it. And while Ping's going down left and right near the Dragon Pit, both sides being very sensitive about the vision and just the movement, especially uh, with Bard and even, you know, Mount Life's Alistair. Both of them can make a lot happen with one single roam. Yeah, they're magical journeying their way back in the lane right now. It's like really just joining up alongside the minion wave. Getting a couple auto attacks down on Shy, but nothing too significant. Just a nice stun and then some autos. So this is a composition that you absolutely cannot follow Bard through the magical journey of your CJ because <laughs> there will be an Emperor's Divide or a Gnarled on the other side just waiting for you. And uh, combined with the True Shot Barrage, that could be incredibly painful. So some some compositions, one thing that's interesting about Gnar is that some compositions you can follow through magical journey with some yes. degree of safety. This one, absolutely not. Probably not a good idea, but I mean, they don't really need to. They shouldn't ever be in a situation where yeah. they really need to, given that they are running that Siege and Code Comp with that Jace. The Quirky for space. And Smem just continuing to keep that lead in terms of top laner CS differential, but uh, Shy not going to feel too bad. Uh, Rumble not one to cry too much because of the small difference. As long as it doesn't keep growing, it should be okay. Yeah, and as we talked about in the last game where the Ku Tigers composition was very dependent on timings, uh, the same can be said of CJ here. They're going to have specific item power spikes once Jace gets the Muramana and some armor penetration, and once Corky gets some magic penetration and the, the Trinity Force, that's when they're going to be in a very good situation to start sieging and taking down objectives. Uh, if they have to go into the late game, the amount of armor that's going to be able to be built against this Jace, as well as uh, just an, an Aegis of the Legion and other more blanket MR items are really going to shut down the post. So CJ, the one really looking at that item and timing window. Yeah. And they have to make sure they get good positioning on Dragon early because they have to win a poke war before going to an objective. Uh, otherwise, Ku, with their amount of crowd control, is going to be able to absolutely rock them. But this is really dependent on Gorilla here. Uh, like you mentioned, Chobra, it's about the tempered fates because when we've seen uh, Bard played here in Korea, 
It was actually against the Koo Tigers, a game that uh, Samsung managed to win against them yes. was because they had fantastic. Luna really delivered with the Tempered Fates, shutting down Jinx and catching Prey out nearly every time, and then just getting on top of them, where even with Fresh Lanterns, he was unable to get out of the middle of a fight. Very and true. if you get two guys from CJ, I, I mean, if you think about how this fight's going to work, Mad Life's going to have a pulverize. Well, they're still going to be in stasis. And Ambition, well, he's got absolute zero, but what's going to happen? He's going to get knocked out of that, and then everybody's just going to be standing around Coco in space while they come out of stasis, and they're going to just die. Yeah. So it's I'm, I am very interested to see how CJ plays this out, because just like the Tigers last game, there are so many ways they could lose, very few ways they could win, and it's dependent on execution. Same can absolutely be said about CJ's composition right here. They have to play around the Bartle. If they can get him to miss it, it's fantastic. Uh, if it actually lands, big trouble. Yeah, and it's not like when Luna was playing, you don't need to simply land it on one person. There's definitely a couple more ways that a gorilla can take advantage of that temper phase. So we'll see how that's all set up. And again, like you mentioned, it really depends on all nine other people in this game. It's not just about gorilla setting something up, but how is his team positioned? How is CJ positioned? And how much time, you know, is there between the poke wars and whatnot? There's a lot of factors going into this one. So it should be a pretty fun one to watch, especially as we see the first couple of team fights unfold in the next 10 minutes or so. But I think that what was great about the draft here is that since CJ took the new new Jace and they only had one pick to respond with it, the fact that they re responded with Bard, which does so well against this style of team comp, was really good drafting for the Tigers. Yeah. So smart picks and bans. And I mean, the Tigers had really good. Oh, and there's a nice combo from Mad Life on Prey. Just gets a free rocket down, but Mad Life, no ultimate. And there are some nice shrines that were set up earlier, so he's just topped up all the way back at full hell. What an annoying lane to deal with. Ezreal, yeah. Bard. There's. There's that almost, pretty good. it's really difficult to lock them down. You have enough sustain to deal with it. You can't really trade with Ezreal because Mystic Shot just allows him to, to CS from range so easily. Like, thanks for the demonstration, Prey. <laughs> you know, Bard has a lot of freedom in this lane too to walk off without Prey losing too much in terms of CS or even turret damage because if he needs to, he can always just pop that True Shot Barrage to clear out the wave. Exactly. So it's, it's just going to be quiet farming all throughout, and Smem's been doing just fine. He's been able to continue to grow that difference a little bit as he has, and he's jumping forward as he builds up his Rage Meter, having faith that when push comes to shove, he'll have that Mega Nar, and he's going to turn into it right now. Won't have too many ways to take advantage of that. Coco, meanwhile, I mean, he's been putting down good damage onto Kuro, but Kuro's been able to keep up in CS. So that just says a lot about Kuro's mastery of his ear in this mid lane. Look at how much CJ's been able to get done in terms of warding, though, with Mad Life and Ambition. They have a massive vision advantage on both sides of the map. Hojin lagging a little bit behind it. Ambition went for that early sight stone, as you typically do on Nunu, and that's translated into just so much knowledge of where Hojin is on the map. They've really kept him controlled. It's allowed them to push up very aggressively in the mid and bottom lane with a lot of safety as well. Yeah. Kuro once again being just about at a third health now. Now with the bruise and the pickaxe, he does need to watch out one more and he could really just been, be all in. No Ignite though from Coco, so that's the saving grace there for Kuro. And wow, yeah, with that hit, Kuro has to go back and this might be the time for the Dragon, especially with the Nunu. Uh, Ambition thinking about maybe prioritizing the slow crab, but I don't think that's necessary. Corky also can make his way over to the Dragon pit safely, not gonna get cut off. So a nice early Dragon hit. 12 minutes for CJ Enches. And this is why Ambition got the Nunu ban in game one. The, virtually a no-risk dragon right there. They had the advantage in the mid lane, and Coco was able to play aggressively because Nunu was always just in the enemy <laughs> jungle, providing vision. So he knew that he could do that. He's also taken some damage on that mid lane turret already. And so CJ really playing at the tempo they need to in order to pick up a win here, grabbing a 12-minute or 11-minute dragon. Yeah, so well done. That's going to help Shy quite a bit too. And then he can have some semblance of damage since he had to go for the Seeker's Arm Guard first. And Kuro's damage also going to be delayed here. Something we didn't mention is he's now going to have to build into Arm Guard so that he's not poked out in lane again like that. But guess what? That means that he's not going to have a lot to either exchange damage with uh, some of the members of CJ or block the magic damage coming in off of Porky and Rumble. So 
Uh, if a mid lane siege starts to develop here with Corky and Jace side by side, Kuro's not going to be able to hold for very long. Not at all, and just easy clears uh, from Coco. I mean, also with that Merlin Omicron from Kuro, but Coco really going to just be able to handle this lane just fine on his own as long as he continues to have that vision. Uh, the danger with Jace is that you don't have an easy escape, so as long as you have vision of no gangs, you can just shove people out. Tries to go for the blue steel. It's a second or two too late, though. And Space has been quietly farming just alongside Prey, and both of them pretty happy about where they are in terms of farm. Some have handily winning the top side, though. Yeah, that's the big one here. Almost now nearing a 40 CS. It's been growing slowly but very steadily in favor of Smeb. And especially after that Seeker's arm guard too, Shy's damage has been delayed quite a bit. Yeah, that's... Ooh. Nice dodge by Kuro. Although I think he meant to go over the wall. <laughs> so... Okay, yeah, sometimes it works like that. Yeah. You know? Doesn't matter, dodge the skill shot. Mission, mission successful. <laughs> Smep just continue to keep Shy shoved in. And yeah, because Shy went for the Seeker's Arm Guard, sure, it allows him to stay in lane a little longer, but he doesn't have the power to just farm as easily with the Harpoons either or the Flame Spitter once it pushes up to tower. So Smep just pressuring that Rumble to lose more CS. Now, CJ didn't need the Rumble for the first Dragon, uh, so that bought Shy some time to get another aggressive item or you know maybe even finish the Zonias before the next fight. Yeah, and Shy, his itemization not anywhere near as critical as Space and Coco's either. So uh, right. he's looking more at that level power spike, uh, getting the level two equalizer than is particularly meaningful in terms of acquiring a big rumble item here. Much more important that the Muramon and the Trinity Force are completed on CJ. And uh, he's not even going to be buffed up really by that blood boil either. So yeah. the items that Space and Coco get it, being magnified by the Dunu as well, so that kind of doubles down on their importance. Absolutely, Coco trying to keep Kuro pressured. Kuro sees that and decides not to go back just yet. He's gonna walk back further. Ambition is in the enemy jungle once again. You know, looking at Nunu's icon is just so annoying. He has that stupid grin on his face <laughs> as he's walking around the minimap. <laughs> Do you hate Nunu? <laughs> he knows what the, what kind of monster he is, Chobra, yeah, and he, revel, that he revels in it. <laughs> it's just a sociopath riding a Yeti, <laughs> enjoying everyone else's misery. Uh, truly one of the most annoying champions in League of Legends. And he's going to catch Prey. A nice burst by Coco. Prey has to go out, but there's a double pulverize and the jump in from Coco first blood. And Gorilla, he just stays himself in the middle of everything. A double kill for Coco. Smeb already finishes the teleport. The equalizer only going to slow down Mad Life. Or no, not Mad Life. It didn't slow down anyone. He was just slowed because he got hit by the boomerang. I got really confused there. <laughs> And now look at that. So very decisive fight from CJ Andis. Not even over an objective, just finding some damage off of the Shock Blast. And this is why wow. Coco's Jace, a bit of a pocket pick, but always a threat. Kuro is going to respond with pushing down a turret of his own, however. So it's actually going to keep the gold totals fairly even. Yeah, so Kuro, I mean, doing what he can, he was going to be too late and too cut off if he joined in that bottom lane. Uh, but the double teleport's coming in, so teleport advantage also not distinct for either one side, although they did get the flash out of Smab, so he had to just hightail it out of there under that tier one at bottom. And Coco, probably the last person that you want to have those two kills. And the reason Ooh, yeah. why is that Corky with the Trinity Force Sword chooses hitting his power spike now. Oh, but a nice effort divide onto Coco to turn things around. Kuro is hiding right to the side alongside Hojin, <laughs> dashes in with the Sand Soldiers, not even using flash there. The mind games with the turret <laughs> passive too. Coco walking a little bit too far forward. But as I was saying, Coco, because Corky's power spike on his items comes a little bit earlier, the fact that you get those kills and can accelerate the the uh, last whisper is very meaningful for CJ because that's going to give them a bigger time window to deal with where both Corky and Jace are in their prime. Yeah. So we do see the two parts to the last whisper. Meanwhile, tier one and top really dangerous because of how much Smev has, has been pushing in. Mad Life not going to get slowed. And just going to walk out. The Vision War is continuing, but it's going to be a little bit tougher for CJ as they don't have that tier one in mid, so they don't have something to fall back on if they were to get caught in the enemy jungle. And that's a big problem as they look to siege this, this mid lane turret. There's a lot of options for a flank from the Ku Tigers. 
Uh, and they really need to get this outer ring of turrets down now. Yeah, nice burst from Porky, though. You getting the big one onto Kuro alongside the snowball. That keeps him at bay. Now, the top tier one has been taken, but no teleport. So Shai just says, all right, I'm going to walk down first. We're going to try to siege this mid or go for the dragon. Dragon is available. Hojin gets caught, and he's the only one. Stays his by Gorilla, but he's going to be able to body slam out for now. Coco charging forward. There's a nice magical journey. They're too scared to follow through, and the Sand Soldier right at the entrance, too. Very well done by the Koo Tigers. Now CJ and just looking for the strain. Ambition's a little low. Needs to watch out for the poke coming in from the Sand Soldiers. Nice burst by Coco, and there is that first by backwards onto Coco. Coco gets body slapped. The Equalizer, not enough. Brave dancing out of it. He's not going to die just yet. A shy looking for another kill. He's going to flash over. He's going to find Gorilla and just roast Bard. Meanwhile, Hojin, he made the escape earlier, but he couldn't get out of it far enough as Smev finally makes it down to the bottom side of the map. Now, the dragon's still not going to be taken, though. Ambition too low and no mana in space either. So those really critical bard ultimates that the Tigers need to be using to deal with the poke, just not even being <laughs> useful this game. Uh, he's prolonged his life once. He prolonged Hojin's life another time. It was a great Emperor's Divide right there to take out Coco Hojin with a good follow-up. But Equalizer doing a massive amount of damage as everyone goes in in space. Untouched that entire time. Same with Shai Shai. Able just to flash over the wall. Gorilla has nothing he can do. Low mana. And then they box in Hojin at the end for a kill for space. And Smep going to get caught in some autos from space. But Boomerang going to keep him safe. The space just farms up that wave and you know this again it's, it's pretty similar to how things were with SKT I mean Kuro fighting so hard to keep things relevant here with those really big plays on the Emperor's Divide but we'll see if it can make enough of a difference for the Tigers to get that W in this second game. Yeah, but the, the positional errors on the Tigers as well Hojin having such a hard time at the beginning yeah. of that fight and then Gorilla you just have to save that ability yeah. so you can set up well with it because that's what your team is reliant on to actually close the gap against these poke champions. Otherwise, Kuro has to pull off a maneuver like that to go all in, and it set them up for an equalizer and a choke sort of accidentally right there. CJ playing patiently, but they're not actually having a hard time executing their composition because there's simply never been a threat to their back line this game so far. Yeah, well, credit to Mad Lime in space too, though, in that last one where they also stepped a little bit right outside the tempered bait. If it had hit all three people, I do wonder if the Tigers may have tried to get a little more poke as soon as the enemy also came out of stasis to make things a bit more even. But all in all, it was definitely still an emergency call from Gorilla to save his teammate. And not exactly the ideal use for that ability in this matchup. And that's, in terms of the Tigers, they have had a hard time reading compositions this season. Uh, they tried to play a Sivir style, like Lulu mid right. pick composition, and Prey was playing it like he was playing Juggermaw, just instead of using it to create picks with the speed, trying to 5v5, and then having Sivir in the front line, and that, that just does not work. You can't, you can't play that composition that way and have it be effective, because you lack the range of the Kog'Maw. Uh, and this time, not really having the right tool in this particular scenario, but Gorilla not making proper decisions when it comes to how they're going to cope with the poke line coming from CJ. Still, I mean, it's only a 400 gold game. The only real separation are these two dragons. And a lot of that gold is tied up in the fact that Smeb rocks shy in the top lane in terms of CS. He's up 42 right now. So he's actually doing a great job of keeping him in it. And it's, as far as that value goes, Getting all of that extra gold onto your main tank against the poke composition is really valuable. Yeah, and here we go, two Tigers joining all up in that bottom lane. CJ just doesn't really have an answer to this. Coco not here, it's basically the only one who can clear that wave. That will be handily taken by three members of the Tigers. The other thing that's great for the Tigers is by being even in gold right now and ahead in turrets, you're, you're actually running CJ out of time in their window to successfully siege. They've only taken one turret right now. CJ really hasn't been together as a unit to take a tower. They've only been grouping for the dragons, and they have to take the outer towers now. Yeah, well, they're trying for it here in the mid lane. Kuro with a quick answer alongside Gorilla. 
But if they go back now, it's gonna get taken, so they're gonna stick around. And how much can they do? Prey gonna show up. The True Shot Barrage did come down earlier, so this wave will be cleared out very easily. Poke not hitting. Oh, there's a big one though onto Kuro and Space just looking for it. And a three man stasis is coming in from Gorilla. Kuro is taking so much poke though. There's the explosive cast. But then the Emperor's Divide outside of Tower Range. Kuro just trying to keep himself safe and poke from afar. Coco takes a lot of damage, but meanwhile, Space takes one kill. He flashes out away and he gets the poke and the snipe down onto Kuro. Hojin takes a lot of damage and the Mystic Shot as Space goes forward. And he's. Oh, he's gonna get the shutdown. But Coco picks up the kill against Prey. Prey just being satisfied with the shutdown gold onto space as Hojin with the body slam keeps Smeb safe. Coco still alive and that means they could, oh there's another poke, just a headbutt out. They can't go for the tower just yet though, the wave has been cleared. But that's a pretty even trade in a power spike for CJ Entis when they have that Muramana and the Ku Tigers keep their tower up as well. So that CJ's gonna have to come back yet again to try and contest that objective. So that hold really important actually for the Tigers. Great Bard ult right there, finally getting it. Move the Sand Soldiers on top, and then shove them all back out. Gorgeous ult combo there from the Tigers. And then they break apart the composition. Now, CJ, to their credit, does a good job of scattering and continuing to get poke in from the flanks. Uh, so in a pretty disastrous situation early on, Prey bites off more than he can chew. Does get the shutdown gold, so it's actually worth it for him to make yeah. that trade in the end. Uh, and they keep the tower up, again, critically, because this is where CJ has to overpower these team fights. but a really good setup from the Tigers prevents them from doing that. And to the Tigers' credits, they've been quick on their feet. They haven't gotten hit as much as Coco would want them to be. Now, Space, of course, uh, CJ just does have the ro do have the rockets coming in from Space, too, so as long as one of them hits, they're okay, but if both of them hit, that's when they can really set up a fight or a siege to their liking, and you see that now, Hojin not taking as much damage as you might imagine. They're nearly out of the danger zone right here. If they can last another five minutes, uh, and Shy actually gonna take a turret, that's huge for them, putting the pressure on while Sveb has no TP and therefore has to stay in that bottom part of the map. So this is good for CJ, this is the setup. Keep poking, delay the dragon, see how much pressure you can get on the top side. Shy now moving down so he doesn't have to use that teleport if he doesn't have to. Dragon has started speed trying over to the Tigers. Yeah, and Coco just poking it down with him. There's absolute zero, and oh, we're gonna see Hojin pick that one up. Space has been frozen, two shot Barrage doesn't hit, and Smep can't, oh, there we go, the Mega Nar comes in, a two-man ultimate. Gorilla, magical journey to the side to try to catch stragglers or a flank here. He's not gonna get the stun, though, and now he doesn't have a way out. Prey just tries to help his teammate from over the wall, and maybe that buys Gorilla enough time. No, he's gonna get sniped out by Coco. Gorilla a little eager with that journey. However, again, even trade, objective goes to the Tigers. This is about all they could hope for at this point in time. Uh, reasonably, they've managed to keep themselves even in terms of gold. Here's the siege. It looks like this tower is finally going to go down. Actually, using the old wow, right there. Shy actually has to flash out of it. Hey, oh, Coco gets denied as he tried to jump over the wall, but the Emperor's Divide was already there. Yeah, you. I don't know what he was thinking. You can't to the skies in that situation. You. Coco did that in the earlier fight too, and I this time the Emperor's Divide was, was already, already there yeah. earlier. You so can't I, do that. <laughs> I, I don't think he's quite on top of that. I don't think he's... Whoa! The barrier was used, but he also didn't get hit. Wow. Wow. Well, quick fingers by Coco. Give him credit for that. Tower but, uh, stays up, too. Again, yes. tower stays up. They're less than a 1,000 gold behind. The Tigers are really coming into their own in this game, and they're going to be pretty damn dangerous in the late game here. So, CJ starting to fall off a bit, not getting the fights they want. They did get the tower in top lane last time, so at least they got something for the dragon. That's still a really dangerous situation, especially because, like you were saying, Chobra, the damage really stopped it here, and the danger of playing the siege comp against an Azir is Azir can turtle forever, and he can just make more turrets that you have to go through. He's a perfect champ for just holding out in this kind of situation. Yeah. We're trying to set something up here once again as Hojin looks to the side for a flank. And I mean, that turret will run out sometime soon, so CJ is just giving up on that as the pressure comes down in the top side of the map. All of the Tigers now in the CJ's jungle around the blue buff. Yeah, Black Cleaver on the Jace, so 
Now, it's the first time we've seen this. Oh! Yeah, uh, okay, well, there is a headbutt in, and Mad Life just takes a lot of damage as Ambition also gets poked out. The turret does go down, though, so I think CJ Entis was trying to look for that window to make sure to deny the easy escape. And oh, the snipe on Dupree doesn't hit as the RK shifts right outside of range, but that's the danger. There's a true shot barrage coming in. Space gets hit. It's chunked down to half health. That was a really nice try, though. Bold from Coco to use the flash like that, but yeah. it very nearly worked. And if Prey goes down there without the true shot barrage being used, then that mid turret almost certainly falls alongside. Oh, wow. Oh, but he's in danger. His once accuracy. Again. Oh, and there's the temper fate coming in, but there's a headbutt out. He's just trying to see Hojin. Hojin will get out. The equalizer goes down. Kuro takes a lot of damage. Prey steps out of it. Kuro picks up the kill, and Gorilla just blocking the poke. They're so low, though, Smeb. What are they going to do here? Are they going to try and defend the mid lane? I don't think they can. Yeah, Smeb just trying to pull the minions over to the side so they can't siege, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, finally does go down. And CJ and just trying to make the most of this window that they have. Smeb is going to turn to Meganar. And Kuro has that Emperor's Divide. So they could set something crazy up as Kuro goes in and pushes everyone behind his tower. And then he goes into Zonia Stasis with the absolute zero charge for full duration. There's a Blade of the Ruin King onto Smeb. Space should be able to pick up that kill eventually as Hojin comes in. There's the Body Slam flash away from space, but Prey is here, full damage and a magical journey all the way through as he uh. finds rockets on the other side. Meanwhile, Mad Life does go down to Prey, and with Prey turning to the side, space has to back out. He can't continue poking down that bard. And look at this, too. They're going to try and siege this mid lane turret, turn everything around. Space taking some nice damage from Prey, who got a double during the course of that chase. But I love the fact that the Koo Tigers aren't afraid to just throw their bodies at CJ to stop the towers from going down. And yeah, looks like the Tigers will do quite a bit of damage onto this tier two. Not enough to take it down just yet, but below half. And Gorilla, I mean, he's been very aggressive with these magical journeys, but this time it worked out, you know, it allowed uh, them to just continue pursuing Mad Life without getting poked down by space. Now, I do think that because of that, Gorilla has been uh, using his abilities very well to deny just really outside flank positioning for the pokes for extended fights. If he goes in, even if he goes down eventually, his damage dealers can keep pursuing uh, the enemy. Yeah. Uh, so, again, we're still so even because of the kill trading that's been going on and the fact that we're still tied up in turrets. So this game has been very interesting to watch. And I have to say that this is the way sometimes you want to delay these siege compositions or timing windows is just by if you can keep on fighting and trading evenly and just wait until you outscale them in the late game, it can prevent them from more methodically taking objectives, like just poking you and then taking something for free every time. Yeah. You have to all in here, because if you don't, you you aren't winning the poke war. So. Well, no, as we've been mentioning, Monty, uh, CJ Entis really slowing down in terms of damage. Meanwhile, Prey has quite a bit of his own. Just sitting on that sheet for now. Deciding what to build that into uh, as he builds up his other items to ensure just more raw power and some utility with that Blade of the Ruined King. Nice poke onto Gorilla. He still, of course, gets chunked down quite easily. He does put down the Fate Killer's Fate Caller Shrine. And he's going to get the heal up just fine. He's still at about half health, so he's very squishy. And CJ has control over the grab right now, but... Uh, I mean, this is just a poke bar, and it's gonna be Hojin who secures it with the smite. Oh, and there is a temper fate. Oh, but the absolute zero coming in to try to deny it. Empress divide, but the equalizer onto Kuro. Can Kuro get out of it? The only one near him is Mad Life, and Kuro will jump out with the Sand Soldier stun onto Alistair Space, getting free damage from the side. Smeb in the midst of everything, but a nice headbutt from Mad Life is gonna keep himself alive as Prey can't find the kill with the essence flux and space charge. Force with the Valkyrie Prey still alive. Coco, one more poke, and he gets one on Takuro. They can't follow the magical journey this time around, but oh, never mind. The damage coming in, but two more members as a double kill goes to Coco. Space at full health gets the shutdown. He's chasing down this poor Nar, and one more auto, another double for Space, and that is a four man kill against the Koo Tigers. But can they actually get anything out of it? Again, the dragon goes over to the Tiger Space. Taking a look at this Baron right now, but with only three people up, Ambition 
trying to make a beeline for it. Let's take a look at how this unfolded again. Gorilla gets the catch, and he and Kuro and Bray all go through for that uh, ultimate, but a good setup for the equalizer at the same time. And then we have Kuro having to dodge out of that fight, trying to play in the choke right there. Mad Life moving forward. Smev has to use that Gnarl just on Mad Life, but this is a great fight for CJ Entis. They're spread out. They're in a position where they can poke. All the engage is now gone from the Koo Tigers, so they're going to be very comfortable in terms of cleanup right here. Coco goes through, but there wasn't an angle as we see Hojin come in for the Baron, but the Baron taken by CJ. Yeah, Hojin just going down without the steal in that one, and CJ and just gets the fight they want, and now they extend their window a little bit with this Baron buff. It's really going to help a lot. Yeah, they have a Rylize as well, so they've got some great tools for kiting, and they uh, there's Baron buff against the Siege Comp is about as scary as it gets. So Gorilla may be able to stop a Siege again with that ultimate. That's still going to be quite difficult. But that fight right there, the Koo Tigers, they got the Dragon. They should be happy with that. Just go ahead and back out. There's no need to go as hard as they did onto the poke composition. You should get them to walk all the way up to your Tier 2 in mid lane and then come in when they're in that position. Don't fight in the middle of the map where everything is so open and they can just spread out in a big arc against your crowd control, and you have no way to engage. Well, it's a really neat idea with the uh, Temper Fate and then the Magical yeah. Journey to kind of get their own pinch in, but I think, like you mentioned, I mean, them stopping Kuro with that equalizer with the Shot Glass and him having to dodge out of it immediately kind of denied all of that. So credit to Shy, and of course, Ambition with the Absolute Zero right on top of his uh, teammate, too, after he's gone into stasis. And now the top turret just getting punched a little bit, but a nice true shot will keep that one safe as Space takes a free tower in mid. Meanwhile, Shy going for the push in bottom. Space coming up towards the top. Prey takes a hit. It still hurts quite a bit. The Shrine's not healing nearly as much as he'd want them to. And the big one coming in against Prey. Yeah, that's just going to be it as Ambition just walks forward to zone them out. He doesn't care if he gets hit a little bit as they go for the shove and this is the, the inhibitors. This is the gold lead now that should propel them to that victory. Iceborne Gauntlet for Prey right here. He wants that additional bit of tankiness as well as the kite ability, but it's not going to do him a whole lot of favors in terms of damage compared to that Trinity Force. And Shai just calmly sitting here with a Siege minion at the back line as Coco rains in some damage from the side of the turret. Yeah, the Iceborne Gauntlet, I mean, will also help with kind of holding back the main wave a little bit, getting that AOE damage in from your Mystic Shots, but it's not going to be nearly enough comparable to, you know, Coco's burst and space to show, especially as all of their abilities will have AOE options. So the Koo Tigers, they lost two Tier 2s. Uh, they're holding off for now as CJ and just trying to decide if they want to continue just to split while they have the Baron buff. And Shy's putting down some nice damage onto Prey with that Leandres. Oh, and Prey, neat little dodge with the Arcane Shift on that Shot Blast. Okay, here we see with that Iceborne Gauntlet and the Barrels coming in. And Space almost gets caught by Kuro, and there's the Summer to heal. He's trying to dodge out, but there's the Saints is coming in. Ambition's trying to set out, oh, but he gets denied by the Emperor's Divide. Now Space still running away, but a nice cutoff from Gorilla as he marches in on the flank. And the Magical Journey in, everybody getting out of that one as Gorilla walks right into Coco. Kuro comes in, there's the Exhaust. Prey is doing free damage. Equalizer will stop the fight for now from Shy. He doesn't get the second Harpoon, but there's the Shock Glass onto Prey. The Koo Tigers do hold off, though. Yeah, and they trade two for one. This Baron is not a factor any longer. They actually kept all their inhibitors up. So the Tigers still in this one, surprisingly. It's, yeah. It's going to be hard for them to win, but they're not so far behind right now. They're only 5K, and we're moving into six item territory. Yeah, once we hit all the six items, the Tigers, as long as that Tempered Fate isn't used completely wrongly, I think should find some advantages in these team fights. Now, earlier, of course, the Koo Tigers actually getting a really nice advantage against CJ Antis as they try to transition from lane to lane, which is a little shocking to me looking at the warding from CJ, but... I also disagree with CJ splitting up right there because yeah. Tempered Fate is an ability that punishes you when you split uh, because it can allow time just to collapse, especially with how long range it was, and that was the eventuality that we witnessed. And CJ just incredibly powerful when they group. So 
I'm not sure that the, the split pushing was entirely necessary. They did get a couple towers for their trouble, but I think they may have been able to get an inhibitor if they had committed to a five-man group. Yeah, or at least the tier two and bottom two after the first two. So CJ Antis perhaps not taking as many advantages as they wanted. Now this dragon is up. Both teams are tied at two two. CJ's gonna go and start it, trying to put some poke down on the flanks and Get poked out by Kuro a little bit as the Ludens Echo comes out. Ambition is the only one left, but here comes the Temper Bay. It's not going to hit. Smeb comes in. Meanwhile, the Dragon goes over the Tigers, and Smeb zoning out the entire team of CJ and just all on his own. And he's going to get slowed down by Shy for now, but there's the explosive cast backward onto Coco. He's the only one who took the damage, but there's the Barrel Slow and the Emperor's Divide. They all go in in a three man ultimate from Smeb. The Equalizer is going to keep Kuro on lockdown as Kuro does go down. Shy trying to put out some damage. He flashes forward in space. Now has free reign, but can Shy be taken down? He's not going to get hit by the stun from Smeb. Meanwhile, Space picks up a kill, and now he's going to chase forward. Space has been left all alone throughout this fight, and Mad Life finishes off the last kill as Gorilla barely escapes with his life. What a great team fight. First off, the Emperor's Divide NAR synergy was wow. pretty freaking sweet to watch right there, but Space, his positioning and his continued poking allows him to take out that fight. If that Tempered Fate hits, it's for sure a win for this fight for the GE the G Tigers, or Ku Tigers rather. Uh, they take out Ambition early on in this one, but the kiting, so dangerous from CJ Endis. You can see the damage coming in there. Mad Life doing a great job of zoning. But look at this, Azir oh, Narblay yeah. is absolutely disgusting. And, but Space, look, no one's touching him, and he's just able to take out Gorilla all by himself. Got stunned right there, but so much damage from this Corky poke as they try and chase Shy around the map. And Hojin left to try and deal with him, but no one has damage to kill Corky at this point because the carries are already gone. Yeah, a brilliant equalizer coming out from Shy too. Yeah, that very good forced response. Kuro to not be able to continue doing damage. Uh, Prey also got hit by a big one on top of the equalizer, so he had to flash out. So CJ Entis are really, they. You see all their players figuring out ways to maneuver around the Tempered Fate and the Empress Divide. We've seen Ambition trying to shut it down with the Absolute Zeros on top of his teammates. And now we're seeing the Equalizers coming in afterwards to set up their own positions. This has been a really good game, especially in terms of team fighting. If we look at the way that these teams are uh, chaining their abilities together, it's been a real pleasure to watch. Yeah, both sides are adapting constantly from one team fight to the next to try to adjust to what the others are doing in terms of Positioning, I mean, we saw in the last one in the top side jungle, Kuro waiting for that absolute zero and then just denying the slow right away so they can continue catching space. Now, Baron is up. No need to dive into that one for either team right now, though. And the poke coming in, not too much damage onto Smeb, but the real deal here is if Prey gets caught or Kuro, or even Gorilla, if Gorilla gets caught and has to go back all the way to base or even gets killed. Like now, Prey takes a lot of damage, and there's a movement speed buff, and there's a knockup only onto Smeb, though. So not as exciting for space. Not going to want to dive into that one. Smeb, not really taking damage yeah. anymore from the poke. So yeah, Smeb's the only one who can really stay in the front line. Now they know they sent Prey and Kuro back. Prey's just going to try to lifesteal, but with the Nunu here, they're trying to just force the Baron out. It's not going down nearly as fast as CJ would want. This is dangerous, especially with the Tempered Fate available. It's just going to go down. It's not going to hit anything, though. Baron is still alive, and Hojin comes in, but the smite goes to Ambition as he picks it up. Mad Life all the way at the front. Space still at full health. Smeb does not have Mega Nar. There's the Absolute Zero at the Equalizer, cutting Hojin off, but Prey trying to poke from the side onto space. So right now, CJ enters. I mean, they got the Baron. They're just looking for the pokes. They're not going to find the kill onto Hojin, and they should just back out right now, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Prey trying to chase with the Iceburn Gauntlet. Not going to happen, but look at this wave in the top lane. Are they just going to try to stable up? Uh-oh, Shy moving a little too far forward to try to keep people zoned and not allow them to go back. He's not getting caught, though. And Prey's just going to get burned down, and there's a Zonia. Space goes forward with the Summer to heal. Ambition gets a slow on to Prey, but they don't end up damage, but the two-man knockup from the Pulverize. Emperor's Divide not enough, but Space shows up from the side with the Valkyrie. He's going to Magical Journey all the way through to get a better angle on to Prey, and he gets it. He flashes forward. He gets the poke with the rocket, picks up the kill. Coco charging forward, gets finally slowed down by Hojin, but what a beautiful setup from CJ Antis. And look at that. He's going to teleport into the top side as well, just holding on to that minion wave. Baron buff immediately hits all the minions. This should be the momentum they need to win this game. Both carries are down for the Ku Tigers. And they're just going to push this one straight through. Wow, CJ pulling through despite some rocky starts. 
And the Explosive Cast is trying to buy time, but still 30 seconds left for teammates to join the Tigers. So that's gonna be it. And there's the Tempered Fate though, it's gonna buy quite a bit of time. Space is gonna get a kill, meanwhile, gets the second turret, and that will be the Nexus going down in favor of CJ Antis. You really have to admire Space's positioning in wow, those team fights yeah. on Corky, because he really pulled it out for CJ in the end. Uh, the Tigers simply couldn't find him alongside some of their other players with their big CC. And so he was able to escape and get a lot of damage down relatively unscathed in those engagements and continue to put out very accurate rockets to clean up the fight. So, man, I think Space did really well there. Uh, Coco, obviously, high accuracy on those shock blasts. And the Tigers, they nearly come back in that one. And I think oh, wow. that was a, just a very good game to watch. It was really entertaining. It was very well thought out. The teams were adapting constantly throughout the entire 42 minutes.